Hi everybody, welcome to Star Techies, my way to the world of technology. So firstly, what is Star Techies all about? These talks are designed to provide an insight into the multitude of career paths available in the field of technology, from DJs, animators, UX designers, even archaeologists. Today we're joined by Sophia Johansson. Sophia is a technology strategist at the Swedish Banking Institute, SCB. She studied for a bachelor's degree in IT engineering, a master's in ICT innovation, and has also undertaken numerous student exchange programs while at university. Sophia will be giving a presentation of her career journey, followed by a Q&A session with the audience. So have you ever been asked uh, what you want to become when you grow up? Uh, at least this is a question that was really common in my life. And I think the answer has changed through my life uh, quite a lot. So today I will just uh, share with you my life story and I hope that it will be interesting. So uh, I was born in uh, 1993. Here you can see me as a baby. And uh, today I'm 27 years old. And uh, growing up, I think I lived uh, quite a careless life. Uh, I was born in Karlstad in Värmland. And my main things as a kid was uh, probably to do sports. Uh, so my personal strengths at that time was that I was a fast runner. I had like big muscles <laughs> back then. So I was always like competing with the guys, uh, but I was also quite recognized for being kind, uh, which I thought at the time was a really boring quality. Uh, but I think today I'm more proud of it. And then I was also known for being smart or being studious. Uh, so I'm not sure that I actually studied so much at that time. Uh, but I think I was always interested in learning new things. And uh, at this point, my biggest career dreams was either to become an Olympian champion uh, in the running. I always like promised my grandma uh, that, I, <laughs> that she would see me on TV one day, uh, just winning a running, like short distance running race or a zookeeper. I think this was probably many kids' dreams, uh, but I always really liked animals and wanted a dog when I grew up. So this was something that I really wanted to do. And then as time went on, uh, I became a teenager. And here, I think this was the first time where I actually struggled a bit. I thought this was a hard time because I didn't really know what my purpose was. I had to pick high school and I also had to start doing exams that actually affected my future. And I think from this point on, uh, every time I got that uh, question of what do you want to do, uh, the answer was expected to be more serious, which was quite difficult, I think. But I still had some dreams. Uh, the main one was to become a pilot. Uh, one of my best friends at the time and also now, uh, her dad was a pilot and I thought that life was just amazing. Uh, being able to travel and see other things. Uh, but then I also had other things that I could <laughs> imagine myself becoming. For example, a police officer, a photographer, or something related to math, because that was probably the area or subject where I was the best at. Um, and my mom usually tells the story uh, that uh, when I was uh, young, I said that I wanted to become a pilot, uh, but I also wanted a dog. And she asked me, uh, so how, how are you thinking about having both of these? And my answer at that time was uh, to get a stay-at-home husband. I wasn't really uh, interested in having a partner at the time, but I thought it would be really like practical just having a husband staying at home with the dogs. And even though this was the first time that I struggled like career-wise, 
I think still some great things happen during this time. Uh, I got some of my best friends today uh, in high school and also the years before in elementary school. I also, when picking university, no, high school, I mean, uh, I started studying the natural science program, which was actually really fun. And here I didn't really know uh, what to choose. I thought it was such a big, important decision and I was way too young to make that. Uh, but I picked the natural science program just to have a broad education so that I could choose more freely afterwards what I wanted to become. And then uh, I also ended up finding some new interests uh, during this time, uh, for example, photography, uh, which I really like today. So I'm really happy about that. And then this was the first time that I also traveled to another continent, which was a great milestone in my life, I think, and it affected me uh, looking ahead. Another thing that I think affected me, uh, this is uh, in the same age uh, as the teenage years, so it was probably when I was 17 or 16, I started uh, spending some of my time as a military youth. Uh, and this was the first time that I met friends outside of Sweden or outside of uh, Karlstad. Uh, and this was just a great opportunity because uh, that made me realize that my life at home was perhaps not everything in life. Uh, it didn't really matter where I was or who I was at home because I could be someone else as well. And through this, I found a new purpose and also new possibilities. Uh, I thought that this was fun and kind of unique because as a teenager, I think that's one of the hard things, just seeing what makes you unique from other kids. And this was one of those things. So here you can see some pictures from that time. And then uh, one of the things that I wanted to do uh, was to become a pilot, as mentioned before. So I also uh, applied for the pilot high school. But however, I didn't get in. So I was probably too young uh, when making that decision. But I was really sad about this because that was the only thing that I knew that uh, was a dream for me. And going further, I finally graduated high school. Uh, so I graduated from the natural science program. And then my first instinct was to try to explore life, try something new and just get away from uh, what I knew. So this is me graduating. Um, and I was actually really lucky uh, because at my school, we had a program which is called International Baccalaureate uh, and, or IB. And uh, having that at the school uh, made you uh, a possible applicant uh, for a scholarship. So I actually applied for a scholarship uh, and it turned out that I got it in the end. Uh, so I received uh, the Dr. Peter Wallenberg scholarship uh, for both, I think, being a good scholar, uh, but also for my personality. So I had to go through various tests, both uh, English tests and then also telephone interviews and um, physical interviews with Peter Wallenberg. And it was uh, one thing that I really didn't expect because at this time I was just an average student. And also in my class, I didn't have like great, I had good grades, uh, but I think since so many people in my class had the same grades, I didn't see myself as outstanding. Uh, but uh, 
by receiving the scholarship, uh, uh, I had the opportunity to go abroad. And then I started studying liberal arts and sciences at Villanova University. So in the upper picture here, you can see me with the other scholars from Sweden. And then you can see me uh, with some of my friends uh, in the same dorm. And then you can see me also as the president, which was a thing that didn't really happen, but I thought it was cool to share. <laughs> so this was at uh, Madame Tussauds. Um, but uh, I think uh, this year really changed me uh, because I, everything that I had done before was at home. And this year I had to move away from everyone that I knew and everything that was familiar to me uh, and start a completely new life in a way. And I was gone for an entire year uh, and it helped me grow a lot as a person. Uh, and I couldn't choose uh, my subject uh, completely freely, uh, but I studied military science, which I chose. Uh, and then I studied a lot of history classes, uh, philosophy, psychology, uh, communications. So a wide mix, I would say, but mostly social subjects. And leaving the US, I returned home. And for me, this was quite a strange experience as well, because when I finally got back home, uh, everything looked the same. Uh, I thought that I had been through this amazing, cool experience, but then I returned and everything had been standing still. Uh, so I didn't really know how to proceed. Uh, if I should go back to my like life as before or do something else. So this was quite also a hard time, even though it shouldn't be, I guess. But I knew that I still had that pilot dream. Also, among with uh, other lefts, uh, defined career dreams as, for example, <laughs> volunteering in a distant place. But the pilot dream was uh, always the more or most uh, concrete dreams. I think that was why I followed it for so long. Uh, but uh, in order to uh, become a pilot, because I also wanted to join the military and uh, perhaps become a pilot through the military, because it's really expensive. And since uh, I was still living in Karlstad, I thought it would be a good decision to move to Stockholm. And then the last day of applications, I applied for the information technology program at KDH just to be in Stockholm. And I thought this program was probably good because it was closely related to the subjects that I studied in the US. Because for me, information technology, it sounded a bit like communications, uh, which it wasn't. <laughs> so uh, as a new student, I discovered that information technology and IT were actually the same. I didn't really make that uh, um, comprehension first. So uh, started studying, I realized that, oh, there's a lot of like programming and a lot of computers in this program uh, where I thought it would be something else. Um, but yeah, I actually, since I studied a natural science program, I was always interested in math and I thought that engineering could be something that I wanted to do um, just because I actually really missed the, the science subjects or the really like problem solving subjects uh, at my studies in the US. So I think this was the right direction even though I didn't know what it mean, meant. But uh, when I applied for the military service uh, as a pilot, I actually failed once again. And this was really uh, hard for me uh, because that was 
my dream for so long and I thought that I could succeed, but I didn't. Um, so yeah, it was just tough because that was everything that I had aimed for. And uh, I actually got in as an officer in the military, uh, but I turned that down because I didn't really know if that was my future. It was not what I <laughs> hoped to be. Uh, so uh, I turned it down, but I did like it at KDH. So I stayed there. And here you can see a picture of me and one of my friends from there. And I started uh, living the student life. So I joined most of the student societies that were at KDH. And I also met one important guy during these years. Uh, so I think life at KDH was a bit of a struggle as well at times. Uh, some of my concerns uh, were that I felt like an imposter, uh, someone that shouldn't be there. And I think this was mostly because programming and IT, everything related to those subjects were really new to me. Uh, whereas uh, some of the students in my class, they had done this since they were children. So I had a hard time just uh, doing things in the same tempo as them. And also just uh, feeling like this is my thing. Uh, so it took me a really long time to get over this. And then also never being enough. Uh, like you could study something really deeply. Uh, and it was hard not feeling that you were completely satisfied <laughs> with uh, how much you knew. Uh, so I think this was... Uh, hard to just uh, take uh, because every time I studied before this point, I thought that I was pretty good. But there were also benefits to this time. I think the challenges that I was put in front of uh, were really like challenging uh, in a good way because I had to constantly learn something new and I really like doing problem solving or puzzles or just figuring things out. And I think uh, also the program is really creative. Uh, so I just uh, learned a lot during this time. And I also uh, found some great friends, uh, some new family members, uh, and also had a lot of fun in all the societies and parties and these things during these years. So during my time at KDH, I also went abroad twice more. So the first time I went to Buenos Aires in Argentina for five and a half months. And here I studied engineering courses in Spanish, which was also really challenging, uh, but I thought it was uh, a great experience because this is something that I couldn't do uh, in the same way uh, just as a vacation. Uh, I got to learn the language much better and I also got to visit almost every place uh, in Argentina during this time. So here you can see two of them, Iguazu, uh, the waterfalls, which is one of the seven natural wonders uh, uh, in the world. And also Patagonia, uh, where I'm walking on a glacier. And then the second time or third time that I went abroad was during my fifth year at KDH. And then I decided to uh, start studying uh, a master's degree uh, in ICT innovation with focus on usability and user experience. And I also decided to uh, have an international master. So I got a double diploma from uh, Italy and also from KDH. Uh, so I spent 
around four months uh, in Italy. And this was a great time as well. I realized that I really liked hiking. So I did a lot of um, hiking and just uh, climbing up different mountains in the neighborhood, which was fantastic, I think. So that was a new interest that I discovered. And then coming home, I finally got my degree. So I could officially uh, call myself an engineer. And many times uh, during all my life, actually, I wondered if I had made the right choice. But I think uh, every unplanned decision uh, has always been really fun and transformative. And it has always uh, led me somewhere else in life. So I think if I would have become a pilot, I would have missed these experiences which is something that in hindsight, I really wouldn't want. Uh, so I'm really glad that things turned out the way that they did. And I think something that I really like about uh, taking engineering courses is, and also uh, working as an engineer is that you're always challenged and you have to solve problems and you really uh, have to use your brain and logical thinking. And I think to a degree, you have to do that uh, in other roles as well. But this is really varied uh, which tasks you have to solve. And today, so now I'm officially an adult, I think. I just bought my first uh, apartment and I'm 27 years old. And I've had uh, two a bit over two years uh, as uh, a working employee. Uh, I started out as an international trainee at SCB and then I have changed position. Uh, I had the enterprise architect role uh, at the same time um, and then also a bit afterwards. And then at the moment I'm a technology strategist. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what all of these things mean. So uh, as an international trainee, uh, or actually after finishing my degree at KDH, I wasn't really sure what to do uh, again. <laughs> uh, but I thought that one way to find out what to do was to become a trainee, because then you get to see a lot of different roles at one company. Another choice that I was thinking about was becoming a consultant, uh, because I think then you have get the opportunity to see many companies, but maybe in a similar role. Uh, and I ended up choosing to become an international trainee, which was also really going well with my international experience. So for one year, uh, I was a trainee along with 22 other trainees and we were spread across uh, Europe as you can see in this map. And uh, we had various uh, program activities uh, during the trainee year. So parts of it was uh, international uh, and here we got the opportunity to go to multiple places. Uh, Finland, the Baltics, uh, different cities in Sweden, uh, Frankfurt, Dublin, uh, and I also went to Luxembourg twice. Uh, I stayed the second time in Luxembourg. I stayed one month and did a project there. And then I also spent one and a half weeks uh, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and just an hour in Singapore after that. Uh, I also got the opportunity to do rotations uh, within the company, which was the main reason that I chose to become a trainee. Uh, I think it's really a good opportunity because then you get to see a lot of different parts at the company. And uh, we also had some time in our home departments, uh, which uh, was uh, the work that I'm going to uh, present in the next slide. And then we had some common activities, uh, for example, divisional days, uh, where different uh, managers and heads 
uh, came and uh, talked to us about uh, what they did at work and why their part of the organization is important. And here you can also see a picture of me and the other trainees. So as an enterprise architect, which was uh, the role that I had at the same time, we, uh, the role or enterprise architects, uh, they work with just uh, defining common principles and processes uh, for the entire organization. So some examples of this is just uh, trying to see uh, what you do where in the organization, trying to map out uh, the capabilities in a good way and see if there's overlap or see if you should uh, think about things differently. Or uh, also uh, trying to see which direction we're supposed to go in uh, strategy advice. So um, within technology, it's important to build things in the right way, uh, having the right setup of components, the right infrastructure, uh, and building things in a modern way. And this group is responsible for just um, guiding the rest of the bank uh, towards that. And I spent uh, my time here until the beginning of the summer. And then I switched jobs to becoming a technology strategist. So here you can see kind of a map over where I am in the organization at the moment. So we have different technology areas and I'm in one of them uh, in a cross team. And in the same area, we have a lot of different uh, smaller areas. For example, data, open banking, digital channels, cloud uh, and process automation. All of these are very technical and uh, perhaps uh, something that we want to go to. Uh, so this, um, these are enablers in a way. And my job, is uh, a lot of different things. Uh, so uh, last week I took part in planning a hackathon uh, for the rest of the bank. I'm also trying to educate others around different technologies, for example, what cloud or open banking is. Uh, I'm coordinating cross activities between these. Uh, so for example, if uh, uh, something is both related to data or cloud, then I could be the facilitator to make that happen. I also work as a cloud communicator. So I spend some of my time making videos or internet articles uh, or other editorial material uh, for cloud and also for other things. And I also, because I enjoy uh, programming, <laughs> I do some of that, uh, mostly front end. Uh, but I think it's really fun to just have that as a part of the job as well. Uh, so <laughs> in Swedish, you could say that uh, I'm uh, alltid allo person, uh, someone that does a little bit of everything, I think. But I think this role is really important because otherwise uh, people would work in silos. Uh, and this is a way just keeping uh, the different areas together. And I'm still not sure exactly what to do in the future. Uh, I think it's really hard to uh, define that. But I think being unplanned is not always a bad decision. I remember during my teenage years that I was really jealous of uh, the people that knew that they wanted to become uh, a doctor or something similar. Whereas I was like, I can become a psychologist. I can become this uh, and that. But at the moment, I really think this is a fun way to live life because not having to plan everything, uh, you can also expect more surprises and more fun happenings in life. So ending there, I 
hope that you have some questions for me. Perfect. Thank you so, so much, Sophia. That was very fascinating to see your career journey. And I really like the story about the dog and being a pilot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my husband. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm sure we have a lot of questions from the audience. So let's start. Why did you undertake exchange studies and how did this shape you as a person? So um, I think I just wanted to have different experiences in life. And I know that, or I think that I made the right choice because as I said, coming back from the first opportunity, everything had kind of remained the same. And I think people in my neighborhood that have stayed in Karlstad uh, their whole life, uh, their lives are probably very similar to what they were when I left. Uh, so I think it really has changed me and it has made me more self-secure uh, as a person. I'm not afraid of like doing things alone. Uh, I can handle myself quite well, I hope. Uh, and I like just uh, taking those opportunities. I think uh, it would be good for <laughs> most people to do uh, these kind of challenges. It doesn't have to be uh, an exchange study, but uh, I think just challenge yourself to do things that are uncomfortable is something that will really make you grow as a person. Definitely, I agree. Okay, let's see what the next question is then from the audience. What was the best thing about doing exchange? I think yeah, meeting people from across the world and just taking part of different cultures. I think yeah, every time that I've been abroad, even though it's been three times, it's always been really hard during the first time to be away. Uh, like the first month, I've always felt really alone and it's been super difficult. Uh, but after that, I always ended up uh, making new friends. And I think one thing that is different uh, from just being on vacation somewhere is that you have to take part of the culture and you have to make new routines in life. Uh, so you actually start living another life than you're used to. Why did you choose natural science as a high school major? Yeah, so as I mentioned briefly, uh, I think this was, at least when I was a student, one of the broadest programs. Uh, I always liked math, so I think that helped me in the choice. But I think what was most important was just to have a lot of different opportunities after the studies. Um, and I think some of the programs are more limited when it comes to that. Did you freak out when you learned that you'd chosen something completely different at KDH? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> actually, um, I hope that no one takes this as uh, <laughs> like something rude, but I think yeah, doing the natural science program in high school, uh, I was always a nerd uh, and I was always a bit like maybe not the coolest person in a way. Uh, but then we had a computer program at the same school and I always thought that they were at least more nerdy than me. Uh, so I was happy about that and I didn't maybe want to become uh, a programmer. Uh, but also at that time I didn't know what it meant. And I think that was the main discovery that made me want to choose it. Because I really enjoy... Uh, like algorithms or problem solving or puzzles or anything that you have to like just logical thinking to uh, to solve. So for me, it was a great surprise. <laughs> but I was freaking out a bit. Also, uh, my program was located in Kista, which is outside of Stockholm. Uh, and I was really sure that it was like the main university when I started. So I had several <laughs> surprises on the way, but I'm really happy now. So <laughs> good that it worked out for you. It was a good yeah. freak out in the end. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, let's see what the next question is then. Isn't it stressful not knowing what to do or what you want to do? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's stressful in a way. Uh, 
I'm still like complaining about this uh, to my boyfriend every now and then. Uh, I think it's stressful because you never really know what to, like how your life will change. Um, but I do think at the same time, it's really fun uh, because I don't have the path uh, laid out for me like some of my uh, friends. And I think that makes life more interesting. Definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah. What do you wish you'd known before entering the tech field? Um, I think uh, as a kid, uh, I was never really introduced to technology. I didn't really have a role model. I didn't know what the, an engineer worked with. I didn't know that there were multiple types of engineers. Uh, so for me, I just wish that someone had explained these things earlier uh, so that I knew that this was an option for me uh, because entering that field, I kind of realized that this is something that I could really enjoy. But before that point, I had no idea what it meant. And I wish uh, as a girl, uh, I wish that uh, more people also had or took the time to explain the same things as to my brother. Uh, for example, like how to, I don't know, change parts in a moped. <laughs> like those kind of things were always explained to the boys. But I think yeah, I would have been really interested in that as well. General advice about being, oh, another one, a woman in the tech field, perfect. Um, general advice about being a woman in the tech field, what are some of the challenges and what are some of the opportunities? I think yeah, one of the challenges is that you're still quite alone as a woman in the tech field. I think we're becoming more, uh, but I do think that there are still people questioning if this is the right place for you. Uh, and it's really like interesting how some people could ask you like, oh, you are an engineer? Like, I would never guess that. Like, why not? <laughs> I'm really good at like these things. So it should be something that I could do as well. So I think the hardest part is just being questioned. And I think yeah, in life, I always <laughs> had to like put extra time to explain uh, that I know things. So I have to prove myself. Um, but I do think that there are also opportunities uh, with being a woman in the tech field. I think um, when people start seeing you for what you are, <laughs> uh, you help change their minds of uh, what is normal. Uh, and you can also get opportunities by that. So you'd be encouraging more women into the tech sector then? I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to just choose what's right for you. Uh, if you had to give yourself a pep talk every morning, what would you say to inspire yourself? Oh, hard. Um, I think just relax. Uh, I think I'm often like stressing myself up. Uh, when I don't really have to, like usually if I have a presentation for managers or important people, uh, I forget that they're also just normal people. Uh, and it's not something that you have to like overthink so much. So just relax, be yourself, uh, it's enough. Like these uh, things I think would be good for me. I think we will have to remember to relax as <laughs> <Stop>. well. <laughs> Okay. What type of skills do you need to work in this field? Coming from my point of view, I think it would help if you're a problem solver, uh, but also if you're a creative person. I think yeah, technology, in technology, there are so many opportunities to be creative um, and also someone that likes to learn. I think that is one of the most important things. 
because you have to learn for life. There's always new technologies coming up and it's good if you, uh, I know that there are many people in the tech field uh, that aren't studying uh, things that are happening, but I think uh, it would be great if more people did uh, because there are so many things happening in this field. And that's what keeps it exciting too. Or the change. Yeah. Mm. yeah, definitely. You're always learning new things. Who is a person that has inspired you the most? I think one person that has really inspired me in life is my dad. Uh, he He's handicapped uh, and he hasn't been able to walk or run uh, since he was about 20. And I think what is amazing about him is that uh, even though he's, uh, <laughs> he has uh, hinders in life, he doesn't really see them. And he, must, like, he has pain uh, <laughs> uh, from uh, this uh, every day, but he just lives, like he never complains and he wants to explore life just as much as me so he's always like every weekend driving around in his car to other places or just doing things in life and I think that's something that really inspires me. Mm, sounds amazing. Yeah. What excites you the most about the future of technology? Um, so as I mentioned before, I think this is just the amount of things happening in technology. I think uh, unlike other areas which have stayed quite stable for some time, technology keeps on changing and it's really hard to predict what's going to happen in like just 10 years. Uh, but it's really fun to like see things evolve as well. For example, autonomous cars or what you can do with the AI or machine learning, uh, how you can utilize data in a better way. Uh, yeah, actually everything uh, is just really exciting, I think. How is the t uh, Swedish tech scene growing then specifically and what do you see on the horizon here? So I think Sweden... Uh, along with some other places, or Stockholm, I would say, uh, along with Amsterdam and uh, uh, Berlin and some other places really have a unique startup scene. Uh, so you can find a lot of tech uh, startups here, um, which are trying out new things. For example, in the banking industry, uh, there are so many fintechs uh, growing and they take like small parts of the banking as a whole uh, but they find their niche and they become really good at it and I think that is something that is super interesting because as technology becomes more and more uh, used by <laughs> the general people uh, you could do so much with it uh, and you can find your niche and what I see on the horizon, I think that is a hard question to answer. It's uh, only the one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I do think that uh, data uh, in general is a super interesting area to explore because you can do so much with just knowing more about how things are. And you can see that in data if you just have the right collection. One of our last questions, is there any advice you wish you'd been given as a teenager? This is one we like to ask at Anisha. So what's mm -hmm. something that you wish you'd been asked as a teenager? Uh, told as a teenager, not asked. <laughs> I'm sure you're asked lots of things as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there any advice you wish you'd been given as a teenager? I think as in my young teenage years, I wish that someone had told me to maybe relax a little bit, like the first exams that you do or the first subjects that you uh, do. 
like you can get into most uh, programs uh, and you don't have to be the best at everything. Uh, I think I struggle a little bit with just being very ambitious uh, through life. And I think that is really good in a way. And it's something that I, has helped me. Uh, but I think it also led to just never being satisfied and always, uh, I don't know, feeling not good enough uh, with myself. And I think since I was quite good at that time, I should have just realized that and also enjoyed it more. Relax and don't put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that was the last of our questions. We had some great questions from the audience again. Um, and thank you so much, Sophia, for sharing your incredible career journey. I'm sure a lot of people have learned a lot from watching today about how you chose your study options at high school, your uh, university choices, your ex many years abroad as well. So you've had quite a fascinating career path already. So best of luck to you with everything. And thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much as well.